President Trump is doing excellent things on the foreign policy front, which is which is great. He has he has this interesting view of the world, President Trump, where everybody is a winner or a loser. Yeah. And that doesn't work well in economics because there can be mutual winners when you and I are trading products and services. Mm -hmm. But it does work really well on foreign policy, it turns out, because it turns out that if Iran loses, everybody wins. Yes. Uh, and so that's been so that's been really good. Like, that's, I, I just that, got done saying that right before this. That was, what's wrong with being I said people will often say, well, that's reductive. What's wrong with being reductive with a nation that commits gross violations of human rights when they don't have a nuclear arsenal? Yeah, there is no ones. middle ground. Again, this is the part that's hilarious to me. Is everybody's like, well, you know, that Iran nuclear deal was preventing them from getting a nuclear weapon. And those moderates, they, they were really being emboldened by the nuclear deal. It's like, well, you know what? If they want to be moderate, you know what they could do? They could just give up their nuclear weapons like, without a deal. <laughs> yes, exactly. They could just stop funding terrorism. In fact, I did, I did an entire piece on this yesterday at, at my website, Daily Wire, where we talked Horrible specifically <laughs> about the, I'm sorry about that, but you know, just because we're wildly more successful than, than anything else out this there. Is a, it, this but, is absolutely true. There's no doubt about it because you employ but, slave labor. It's amazing what you can do with children at computers in Bangladesh. <laughs> well, I mean, you're wondering why I had a bad day. Our contract just got to toss in the garbage. Oh, but in any case, the, but, but one of the one of the things I was saying is that there are only a couple of nations in human history that have had nuclear weapons or were developing nuclear weapons and gave them up. One was in 1993, South Africa gave up their nukes. Yep. Uh, and the other was in 2003, Gaddafi gave up his incipient nuclear program. Both of them did so as a show of good faith to the world. It wasn't that we came along and said, here's a bunch of money. Now will you give up their nukes? because that would be stupid. Then they would just say, well, I'll keep the money and develop my nukes. Right. Instead, it was a bunch of regimes attempting to moderate themselves first, and then as a symptom of that moderation, they were saying, here's our nukes. So trying to say that Iran was going to moderate because we gave them a bunch of cash is stupid. If they wanted to moderate and have a bunch of cash, they could do so without any agreement at all. Right. Well, it's, it's a, you know, a comparison would be a, a plea, plea bargain, if you're talking about South Africa, if you're talking about Gaddafi, versus sort of uh, Kramer versus Kramer, Dustin Hoffman with the kid in the ice cream tub, just saying, don't you do it. Don't you <laughs> do it. That's the big difference. There is a big difference. One occurred before and one occurred after. And here's the thing, like I just talked about, we're not nuking them. We're not bombing them. We're just not going to do business with them. We're just going to isolate them. I mean, even liberal parents just make their kid have a timeout or put them in the corner. We're not even spanking them. And let's be real about this. It is providing Israel the option to spank them, which I think is a good mm -hmm. option. It's, pro it's providing this newfound alliance of Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, UAE, the capacity to actually fight back against Iranian aggression. Because what the Iran deal really did mostly was it said to any of those nations, if you do anything against Iran, you're in breach of this agreement. You've destroyed world peace. By Trump saying, listen, this agreement's no longer here, then it becomes very clear who are the violators of the, of the peace in the Middle East. And that was obvious for anybody who had half a brain anyway, since Iran has taken over Syria, they've now taken over Lebanon, they've taken over most of Iraq, they've taken over, uh, they've taken over Yemen. Uh, they've, they've taken over the Gaza Strip, too, I mean, for the, the amount of funding they're giving to Hamas. Right. Like, what exactly, like, why was this controversial in the first place? I will say, to Obama's credit, it was Barack Obama who created the alliance of Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, Israel, and the UAE. He did so completely unintentionally, just like every other good thing he did unintentionally. But this was mostly Obama's doing, because by kissing Iran's ass, he put everybody else in a position where they had to suddenly ally with each other in order to face down Iran. Yeah.